Greetings to all. This is Dr. Esthanil Kumar, working as assistant professor in the Department of Biotechnology, Vignan Foundation for Science, Technology and Research, DMITV University, Andhra Pradesh. Today, I am presenting the presentation on behalf of Professor P.B. Kavikshur, sir, who has encountered some unavoidable circumstances. So, I am presenting on his behalf. And the topic for today's presentation is Transporters, Crucial Players in a Complex Game of Salt Stress Tolerance. Before moving into salt stress, I will give a brief introduction about uh, abiotic stresses. What are abiotic stress factors? Abiotic stress factors are those stress factors, they are non-living stress factors like water, salt, light and temperature. Water, salt are the most important abiotic stress factors. Actually, plants need optimal environmental conditions for their growth and development. As social in nature, plants are always affected with various biotic and abiotic stresses during their different developmental phases. These stress factors are interconnected and they lead to a series of biological, morphological and physiological conditions, which obviously results to the death of the plants. These stress also cause osmotic changes in the cell leading to the metabolic derailment of cellular activities. And if the stresses are very severe, the plant becomes sterile and the productivity is lost completely. Due to various abiotic stresses, every year 5% of the world's cultivated land and 50% of the crop productivity are affected. As I told you earlier, the, these are interrelated and of them, salt and drought, they cause 50% loss of the crop. The entire presentation is mainly based on the salinity stress how the plants, how plants are adapted, different mechanisms to overcome salinity stress. And what are the genes that are responsible for salinity stress tolerance? Soil salinity is defined as the measurement of soluble salts in soil. When the conductivity of the soil is 4 decibel siemens per meter, which is equivalent to 40 millimolar sodium chloride, we call the soil as saline. Soil salinity is not a new problem, first of all. It's a very old problem. However, the problem is increasing annually at the rate of 10% and this is alarming. Soil salinity is due to various factors like low precipitation, high surface evaporation, irrigation with saline soil water, entry of salt water into fresh water by sea and poor forming practices. Whenever there is high amount of water, we call that particular stress as flooding stress. Whenever there is low amount of water, we call it as drought. Similarly, salinity and solidity are associated with salt and cold and heat with temperature. Similarly, light also results in abiotic stress by forming photooxidative stress. Okay, as I told you, the work is mainly focused on salinity. During the course of evolution, plants have developed different mechanisms to cope up or to tolerate this salt stress. What are the main mechanisms that plant has been adopted to tolerate salt stress? The first one is sodium exclusion. Second one, sequestration of sodium and chloride ions. And the third one, acquisition of potassium. By nature, plants require high potassium by sodium ratio. Plants sense the various abiotic and biotic stresses. And whenever they sense these stresses, they induce a complex or the cascade of interactions. And these inter interactions protect them from various stresses. How soil, I mean, how sodium enter into the Plants. Sodium mainly enters into the cell from the epidermal cells of root hairs. There they enter into the cell and whenever there is an increase in concentration of sodium, the electron neutrality or ionic balance of the cell is disturbed. Sodium mainly enters into the cell with the help of non-selective cation channels. Once the sodium enters into the cell, it results in the depolarization. Once there is a depolarization, cork channels are activated. Cork stands for potassium outward rectifying channels, where which results in the leakage of potassium from the cytoplasm into or from the cytoplasm to outside. Okay, in this way, potassium water that is there in the cell it will go outside, and similarly, it also activates the proton ATPase, which generates energy. The hyperpolarization activates the potassium inward rectifying channels. With the help of potassium invert rectifying channels, potassium enter into the cell. And there are some other transporters which helps in the uptake of potassium and proton. Thereby, so the transporters or the cell tries to maintain ionic balance in the cell. And if there is any 
sodium that is toxic in cytoplasm it will be sent into the vacuole regulation of sodium and potassium homeostasis by the salt or least sensitive pathway as i told you in the previous slides whenever there is high sodium sodium enters into the cell with the help of non selective cation channels along with sodium calcium also enters into the cell what are the sodium that has been entered into the cell it will destabilize the ionic balance so in order to maintain the ionic balance excessive sodium that has entered into the cell it has to be sent out the first mechanism about sodium exclusion which occurs with the help of salt or least sensitive pathway what are the sodium that has entered into the cell it has to be sent out and this is done with the help of sars1 gene which is located at the plasma membrane under normal conditions sars1 remains inactive due to its c terminal auto inhibitory domain but whenever there is a salt stress condition through phosphorylation of the auto inhibitory domain by sars2 and sars3 complex it get activated sars2 indeed is a serine threonine protein kinase that phosphorylates and activates sars1 gene auto phosphorylation of sars2 is very important and this sars2 along with the complex of sars3 it helps in the exclusion of sodium from the cell sars3 is a calcineurin binding protein is a calcium sensor whenever there is excess calcium whenever the entry, there is entry of calcium into the cell this sars3 sends that one and it activate the sars2 sars3 and sars2 together they send the sodium or away from the cell nothing but sodium exclusion on the other hand what are the sodium that is there in the cell it will be sequestered into the vacuole with the help of nhx1 nhx stands for sodium proton antiporter okay and this sars3 sars2 complex they also acts and ideally regulates the hkt1 so that no sodium enters into the cell coming to tissue tolerance of sodium ions what are the sodium and chloride that have reached the cell cells or the plants try to tolerate this sodium and chloride by anatomical adaptations and intracellular partitions especially dicotyledon halophytes exhibit salt induced increase in the cell size this is because due to the increase in the vacuolar volume and uh, they excrete the sodium and chloride by the help of salt glands which are your modified trichomes or salt bladders modified epidermal cells thereby they exclude the salt from the cell and moreover chlorine accumulates more in epidermal cells compared to the top mesophyll cells on the other hand potassium accumulates more in mesophyll cells compared to epidermal cells but there is no evidence like uh, partition of the sodium in between different cells what is the need for potassium to the plants potassium is very much essential which is a essential macro nutrient and is the most abundant cation in the plants plants dry mass con contributes nearly 10% of the potassium and it is actively involved in various enzymatic active reactions like photosynthesis protein synthesis cell elongation and leaf and stomatal movement in normal conditions high potassium by sodium is required for a cell to perform its metabolic activities and the entry and the, and the loading of this potassium and sodium is sodium selective and potassium selective pathways i mean the concentration of sodium and potassium in the cell depends upon the sodium selective sodium non selective potassium selective and potassium non selective pathways in the present work we had performed genome wide screening in sorghum bicot especially we mined the we looked and searched and we mined the data of potassium transporters and sodium transporters in sorghum we had identified 7 nhx sodium proton antiporters and 9 nhe in sorghum nhe stands for sodium proton exchanges both do the similar function in plant system we call them as nhx whereas in animal system we call them as nhe of the 7 nhx transporters two are plasma membrane bound four are vacuolar bound and one endomembrane and of all the 9 nhe eight of them are localized on plasma membrane and one and what vacuolar membrane out of the 52 potassium transporters identified eight belongs to hkt family what one belong to cup or hack family and three belong to the kea family potassium efflux antiporter later we performed gene structure i mean gene characterization by using gsds software wherein we had identified uh, exons ranging from 1 to 19 so these genes nhx 
and NHE that show different number of exons and introns. We also perform the motif characterization, wherein we identified amyloride binding signature sequence, and this has depicted in black in color in all the uh, NHX and NHE. And uh, this amyloride sequence is absent in NHX 4, 6, and NHE 9. Later, we have constructed the phylogenetic tree based on their localization. These sodium proton transporters, sodium transporters, they are classified into three groups vacuolar based, endomembrane based, and plasma membrane based. We had taken sodium transporters from sorghum bicola, popular, Cerebroopsis, Brachypodium, Oreza, Glycine Max, Vitis vinifera, Fiscometrilla, several things we had taken. And all of them were constructed with the help of a mega tree, wherein we identified most of them located to plasma membrane two of NHX and eight from NHE and four on NHX of NHX for, for vacuolar. Totally, we identified four vacuolar of NHX and one of NHE. Similarly, two of NHX on plasma membrane and eight of NHE on plasma membrane. Only one from endosomal membrane. We also performed string analysis to identify the interaction between these proteins. I mean, in what way they are interacting with each other, how, what is the interaction effect, how they are, are they closely related to each other, are they really interacting with each other. So in order to find all these things, we have performed the string analysis, wherein we identified NHX5 to be a major interactant with all other in sorghum bicolor. We also performed tissue specific expression of SB NHX and SB NHE genes under stress conditions. We have employed four stresses, salt, drought, E and cold. We had given 150 millimolar sodium chloride, 200 millimolar uh, mannitol for drought. We had placed the plants at 4 degrees centigrade for cold stress and at 42 degrees centigrade for heat stress for two hours. After two hours, we have collected the samples and uh, like embryo, root, leaf, and uh, stem. After collecting, we had isolated the RNA. Later, we had performed the QRT-PCR and found that most of the genes, the, I mean, the sodium proton are exchanges. They are highly expressed under salt stress followed by heat and cold in stem conditions. Similarly, devoid of stress, high expression of sodium proton antiporters and exchanges have been observed in root tissue followed by leaf tissue. This was a paper published from this in Silco work, genome-wide analysis and identification of sodium proton antiporters and uh, exchanges homologs in sorghum bicolor and it was published in genes. Like to Sodium transporters, we also did for potassium transporters, wherein we had identified 52 different types of potassium transporters and uh, we have performed the gene characterization, uh, I mean the exon and intron characterization, then followed by exon intron characterization, we performed motif characterization and this motif characterization displayed the presence of signature sequence. G, V, V, Y, G, D, L, G, T, S, L, a signature sequence which is present in all the potassium transporters. Similarly, we also constructed a phylogeny of the potassium transporters. Then we have developed the circus map of the potassium transporters in comparison to Oreza sativa, Zia maize, and sorghum bicolor, wherein it has shown that some chromosomes are hot for, hotspots for potassium transporters. Coming to the gene expression analysis, we had isolated the RNA and then performed uh, QP, QRT PCR. Later, we identified that high amount of potassium transporters, HAC1 and KA, are highly expressed in cold leaf, followed by cold root, followed by heat stem, salt leaf, drought leaf, and drought stems, respectively. Of compared to HAC, KA are highly expressed. In order to identify the functional analysis of these transporters, we had isolated a gene and we named it as SBNHXLP, sorghum bicolor sodium proton antiporter like protein which is of 1473 base pairs in length and it has 10 exons and 9 introns here the gene uh, isolation of the gene this particular picture represents the isolation of the gene which is nearly 1.5 kb later we had developed the cassette for expression using p cambia 1302 vector and uh, which contain gfp and this is the pictorial representation of gene characterization with exams and interims, and this is a full length CDNA clock. The picture depicts the different uh, stages of regeneration and hardening of SBNHXLP in tomato. Why we had taken tomato? The tomato is the second most produced and consumable vegetable, hence we have chosen this one, and tomato is susceptible to salt. So we thought to develop 
transgenic tomatoes which tolerate salt stress so the the first picture shows the selection of uh, explants on hygromycin medium followed by the production of multiple shoots on tdz medium along with, now in this you can see the rooting formation followed by the acclimatization and finally growing in the garden soil and later we perform the molecular analysis of these transgenics using gene specific primers for sb nhxlp gfp and hpt2 genes wherein we can we had observed the amplification of the sb nhxlp gfp and hpt2 in all the transgenic plants and positive control there is no amplification in the untransformed plants hence from this it is clear that what are the plants that have been generated they are true transgenics later we perform gene copy number for identification of single copy insertions because single copy insertions are very much useful for mendelian segregation and also to prevent gene silencing later we performed rt pcr similar to pcr wherein we identified the sb nhxlp transcripts which are absent in untransformed control now um, we did uh, evaluation of uh, transgenics that we have obtained we have performed the evaluation test by treating them with uh, 200 millimolar sodium chloride and now we have waited for 7 days and after 7 days the plants were watered with uh, normal tap water and we found uh, striking differences between untransformed control and the transgenic plants the tran untransformed control where the leaves turn pale yellow in color later they dried and eventually the plant died and there were no fruits observed in untransformed control on contrary the transgenic plants even they have shown some symptoms but they are not up to the control level so they had pro the apical portion of the transgenic leaves they are green in color and new leaves have occurred during the stress treatment treatment and even after recovery on this picture it is very clearly evident that the transgenic whatever we have inserted into the tomatoes it's is uh, excluding the sodium away from the plant so this plant the transgenic plants are able to tolerate the sodium chloride on the other hand as a transgenic untransformed plant as it is lacking the transgene it cannot withstand the 200 millimolar sodium chloride and at the same time the transgenic plant showed fruits they have uh, collected the fruits at the end on the other hand no fruits are observed in uncontrolled transformed plant. we also performed the localization of sb nhxlp whether it is a plasma membrane bond or vacuolar bond we identify it as a plasma membrane bond from this you know, transgenic root and transgenic stem wherein we have conjugated the secondary antibodies with uh, alexa flor and we found that uh, fluorescence has been observed in transgenic root and stem and which is lacking in control root and stem by this it is clearly evident that the sb nhxlp is a plasma membrane bound uh, transporter we have also performed fluorescence lifetime imaging revealed less sodium green fluorescence in transgenic roots and stems compared to the untransformed controls we have taken for this experiment we had taken 9 day old seedlings treated them with 150 millimolar sodium chloride followed by incubation in sodium green indicator for 1 hour after 1 hour we had analyzed the sections and we found that high amount of sodium green fluorescence has been observed in control stem followed by control root on the other hand transgenic stem and transgenic root they displayed low amount of sodium green fluorescence this is because the transgenic plants contain the gene which is excluding the sodium so less amount of fluorescence has been observed in transgenic compared to the untransformed controls as they lack the trans g nothing but your nhx lpg after harvesting the fruits these are the control fruits and these are the transgenic fruits there was a decrease in the size of the transgenic fruits compared to that of the control fruits even there was a decrease in seed number in transgenics compared to control this may be due to the constitutive expression of uh, sb nhx lp gene if we have expressed the gene under the influence of uh, stress induced promoter then the fruit size would have been increased we also performed anatomical studies wherein we had treated the control plant and uh, transgenic plant with sodium chloride and we performed the anatomical sections wherein we had observed that there was a lysis in control root and uh, the vesicle natures or the compressed vesicles have been observed in control stem on the other hand in the transgenic root and the transgenic stem 
in the lumen are wider, which helps in the high transport of the water. Similarly, the cells are intact in nature. Later, we perform the estimation of proline, sodium, act sodium activity, cat activity, fluorescence. We have measured the fluorescence. So higher proline accumulation has been reported in transgenics compared to the untransformed control. Higher sodium activity and cat activity are also reported. In addition, the, there was a reduction in uh, chlorophyll fluorescence, but the reduction is better when compared to that of untransformed control. After uh, looking at all these experiments, we performed the IR analysis wherein we identified higher accumulation of potassium in the plants. We couldn't understand what could be the reason. Later, we performed the in silico method and we identify some CHH2R involving with the so SB NHX LP gene. So we did the CoIP experiment. We performed the pull-down using CoIP, wherein we identified the interactant to be CHX2, an important uh, cation proton antiporter, which helps in the accumulation of potassium in the cells. We also performed the transcript expression of SB NHX LP and SLCHX2 in tomatoes. We have used different kinds of treatments like uh, salt treatment, drought treatment, potassium chloride, and uh, potassium nitride. Of all the treatments, uh, higher expression of NHXLP and CHX2 are observed in salt treatments followed by potassium nitride treatment. And this particular work, wet lab work, has been published in Frontiers in Science. Coming to the conclusions, we had identified seven NHX and nine NHE transporters in sorghum. We also identified 52 potassium transporters, which are expressing under high salt and uh, high temperature stresses. We had identified new gene, SB NHX LP. Why we are calling it as new gene means the size of this gene is similar to NHX, but it is localized to plasma membrane. Hence, we have labeled it as NHX LP. And this NHX LP resulted in the decreased accumulation of sodium with increased accumulation of potassium under salt stress. OIP experiment identified the presence of interactant, presence of the interactant CHX2, which helps in acquisition of potassium. And this SB NHX LP is associated with sodium exclusion at the membrane level and it helps in the amelioration of salt stress in transgenics. At the outset, I would like to thank the INBIX organizers for giving me this opportunity. I would also thank my professor, P.B. Kavikishor sir, and I also thank Dr. P. Himokumari who has performed this work, followed by Dr. Prashant Bayaklus, who has uh, helped in performing co-IP, and Dr. Ramesh Kautam in providing the antibodies for this experiment. Thank you, thank you one and all.